Hey YouTube, Copperstein here, thanks for tuning in again. In today's video we're diving into the symbolism and mythology behind the Pathfinder starting area. It's another Maple Story Mythology Monday, let's dive right in. Pathfinder starts her adventure after stumbling upon a cave where she finds notes and books of an ancient rune. This rune is an 8 pointed star and while I don't know any real life runes who use the same symbol, the 8 pointed star on the other hand is a symbol first used by the ancient Sumerians and is called the Star of Ishtar. Now this name might sound familiar to some of you Mercedes mains out there as Mercedes has a skill called Ishtar's ring. The goddess Ishtar was known as the Queen of Heaven and was the goddess of love, beauty, fertility, war and justice. Now while the symbol plays a huge part in the theme of the Pathfinder area and might be inspired by the Star of Ishtar, I actually assume it's something else called the Rose of Wits, or in layman's terms an 8 pointed compass rose. A compass rose would make more sense story-wise, I mean the class is called Pathfinder and Pathfinder's story arc kinda revolves around her having to grow as a person, overcoming her curse and finding her place in the world. Also another compass appears later near the Karupa village to point Pathfinder to a clue of where she can undo her curse. The compass theme also can be found in Pathfinder's skills as for example there's one called Cardinal Deluge and Cardinal Directions or Cardinal Points are literally North, East, South, West. Now about Pathfinder her curse, the curse is symbolized by a sigil. A sigil is a symbol used in magic rituals. A well-known list of sigils can be found in the book called The Lesser Key of Solomon. In ancient times, sigils were used to summon and control demons, as the sigil would contain the name of the demon or the entity that was trying to be summoned. And if you know the name of a demon, you would have control over it. Now, in modern times, sigils are commonly used by practitioners of chaos magic. Chaos magic users create sigils to reflect the desired outcome of a spell, to, for example, curse someone, to maintain or break connections with people, and much more. And well, 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 what do you know? The sigil of chaos, which is commonly used as a symbol of chaos magic, is a circle with eight arrows pointing outwards. Looks familiar, right? However, the sigil as shown in the game has no specific meaning, at least, not that I could uncover. After Pathfinder gets cursed, we are dropped in Partum, the forest near the roots. Now, Partum is actually part of a Latin sentence that goes like this. Aldi alteram partem, which uh, actually I think it sounds more Italian when I say it, <laughs> which basically means listen to the other side or let the other side be heard as well. It is in principle that no person should be judged without a fair hearing in which each party is given the opportunity to respond to the evidence against them. Which seems to also reflect a part of the story as the Karupa refused to listen to Pathfinder or answer questions after they are spooked by the noise coming from the relics she is holding. Now these villages Pathfinder encounters are called themselves Karupa which seems to be a reference to the Hindi god Karupa Sami. Karupa Sami is one of the regional Tamil Hindu male deities popular among rural social groups of Tamil Nadu, which is an area in India. He is a demigod and is the avatar that appeared out of Vishnu's right hand. Once a year in the villages where this god is still actively worshipped, festivals are held where the villagers are not allowed to exit the village and offer animals and naravam, which is a sort of a form of modern alcohol, to this god. The Karupa in the game seem to draw inspiration from this as they also never leave their village and they have an annual festival. However, in the game they create a healing tonic which is part of an ancient ritual passed down among the Karupa. Fun fact, if you ever go to the Karupa village in the game, you might notice that all the birds in the village have quite interesting names. They're all named after cheese. Marscopo is a reference to Marscopone cheese which is actually very delicious. Gouda is actually a reference to Gouda which is the best cheese because it's Dutch. Brie is named, guess what, after Brie, which is really good on toast. Mozza Mozza is named after Mozzarella, which is also pretty damn tasty. Parmi after Parigano, which is okay if you like it. And Gargons, who you will encounter later during the tutorial, is a reference to Gargonzola, which requires an acquired taste to like. I feel like we should do a cheese review video someday. Anyway, as the story continues, Pathfinder finds herself in the heart of the ancient runes speaking to a soul. The triangle with the soul inside it vaguely reminded me of a Masonic all-seeing eye. The symbol on the left pillar also vaguely resembles an all-seeing eye. Inspiration might have been drawn from these symbols, but they don't really represent them anymore though. The soul NPC reveals that a mysterious magician corrupted the relic hundreds of years ago. 
This turns out to be a black mage worshipper, which can be seen trying to summon the black mage using the mirror from Rin, the goddess of time. However, he summons the horrific pink bean instead. And with that, we have reached the end of the tutorial and the end of this episode. Are there any other areas you would like me to cover or did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this episode and see you next time.